piping up the new condenser for my Stuart Victoria model steam engine plant. I've always liked the look of PM Research elbows, so I bought some, and I bought them from a company in England called Forest Classics, and Forest Classics imports some of the PM Research stuff. It was just a speed situation. It's quicker to get things in England from England than it is to get them from the USA, as the Atlantic Ocean tends to get in the way. The first part to work on is the condensate drain tap. The tap, of course, is already made. I soldered this adapter that I made into the end of the valve so I could connect it to a piece of silicone rubber tubing. On the other end is a similar piece of brass to act as a weight. And what this means is the silicone rubber pipe will always be at the bottom of the tank. This is not an original idea. I've done quite a lot over the years with radio control model planes. And this principle is used in the fuel tanks, so whichever way up the aeroplane is, the fuel is always pulled from the lowest part of the tank. After cleaning up the tap and removing the paint, I'm temporarily fitting the union nut back on it. In the finished installation, I will be fitting a copper pipe to this tap, and by putting a piece of silicone rubber tubing on this pipe, I can drain the condensate into a container. Here I'm removing the original fitting, being very, very careful not to drop these nuts on the floor, otherwise they'll never be found. And the only part of this assembly that I'm going to keep is the flange that bolts onto the engine. I'm not going to throw away these other parts of this assembly, I'm just going to put them into my box of model steam engine fittings. I threaded the steam flange quarter by 40 threads per inch, then I made up a quarter by 40 threads per inch adapter, and here I'm fitting one of these really nice PM Research elbows to the flange, using some Loctite 542 of course. Quite a lot of years ago, when I was a relative beginner, I was always amazed how anyone managed to thread the ends of a copper pipe without destroying it because every time I tried, I made a thorough mess of it. Either it spun round in the chuck, or it just mangled up and went wrong. And then one day, quite a few years ago, I figured out how to do it. A die holder, whether it be one of this type, or whether it's a tailstock die holder, has three screws in it. If you slacken off the two outer screws, and tighten the middle screw, the taper on the middle screw will open up the die. And this is a secret to threading copper. You start off with the die opened up as much as you can, you cut the first thread down the piece of copper pipe. And it's a good idea to use plenty of threading lubricant. I tend to use steam oil that seems to work okay for this. So once you've cut the first thread, which is quite shallow, you back off the die and readjust the die, closing it slightly, and repeat the process, being very careful not to cross-thread the die. To thread this particular copper pipe, I did four passes for each thread adjusting the die holder before each pass. And now it's time to fit the elbow onto the end of the pipe and it fits perfectly. I'm using Loctite 542 to make sure it doesn't leak. I'm getting most of it on my finger. I use far too much here. You don't need anywhere near this amount. I was just a bit ham-fisted. From an appearance point of view, it's quite important to make sure that all of the thread is inside the elbow, because any thread left showing doesn't look too good. There is, by the way, a much easier way to do this, and that is to drill out the elbow with a quarter inch drill, and then just silver solder the pipe into the elbow. But I quite like doing it this way. In this clip I'm using my Barco spanner to firmly screw the elbow fitting onto the pipe. And now I need one more piece of pipe to be exactly the right length and threaded on both ends. A good tip is to cut the pipe slightly longer and thread the ends slightly longer then trim the pipe to its final length on the 1 inch belt sander. I'm assuming that anyone watching this actually has a 1 inch belt sander, and if you don't, I really should go and buy one because they're extremely cheap and incredibly useful. You could be forgiven for thinking, now there's a problem, how do I screw this into the condenser? And you have to think ahead, it's a little bit like painting a floor and painting yourself into a corner. I remove the condenser and screw the whole assembly into the condenser, then I put the condenser back in place and everything should line up if it's been made correctly. By the way, I refitted the displacement lubricator early on to make sure that nothing fouled when I made the new junction to the flange. And I can engage smug mode on this one, I got it right the first time, I don't always get it right the first time. But this fits perfectly and it's time to put these really tiny nuts back on without dropping them. These are 7BA nuts and they really are quite tiny. So that's about it for this episode. 
All that's left to do is to run a quarter inch pipe from the large union in the centre of the condenser through the bracket that's on the bed plate at the back and as the quarter inch pipe exits this bracket I'm going to fit another PM research elbow to take the pipe at 90 degrees up towards the chimney. I'll be covering the finishing off, the making of the blast pipe and the testing of this in the next episode. In this clip I'm straightening up the displacement lubricator and you can see the condenser clearly between the engine and the boiler. Even though it's quite a large item, it seems to be quite in keeping with the plant. And here's a shot of the engine from the other end where you can't see the condenser at all. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.